So good evening, everyone, and welcome to this conference with Le Cercle des Langues. Tonight we are speaking about music. So on va parler de musique. Tonight's conference is level A1 to level A2. So we are going to start. Let's please make sure that all our microphones are muted. For the first, for the first part of our conference tonight, we will be talking for 25 minutes. Afterwards, for the last five minutes of the conference, we are going to have an answer and question. So please feel free to write your questions on a piece of paper or to put your questions in the chat. Ça veut dire que vous pouvez mettre vos questions dans le chat ou sur une pièce de papier et on va peut-être discuter juste après la conférence. D'accord? Donc, so let's go. In today's conference, we are going to talk about four things. Basic music vocabulary. Number two, describing music. So, comment est-ce qu'on peut décrire la musique? Number three, we will talk about preferences. And number four, some fun facts about music. So, let's begin. Vous allez voir que à droite, il y a la traduction en français. So, si le vocabulaire est un peu difficile pour vous, vous pouvez regarder pour avoir le vocabulaire en français. Alors, talking about music is a very important aspect of society. This cultural art identifies and transmits traditions, ideals and perspectives of life that allow societies to enjoy and develop in an organic and recreational way. So, si on dit organic, we talk about in manière organique et recreative. Talking about music is important for several reasons, ranging from personal enjoyment and social connection to educational and professional development. Ça veut dire que quand on parle de musique, c'est vraiment des loisirs personnels et c'est votre connexion avec votre communauté. So, c'est très social. C'est aussi le côté éducation et professionnel aussi. So, let's look at the benefits, les avantages. We have cultural understanding, educational value, critical thinking, professional development, entertainment and enjoyment, language and communication skills. This means that music helps us to connect to different parts, cultural understanding and educational value, et la reste. So let's look at basic music vocabulary. From now on, we recommend that you take notes of the vocabulary, expressions, and tips to have conversations about music in the future. Ne vous inquiétez pas, um, tout le conférence sera envoyé après la conférence en PDF et vous, vous pouvez voir tout le vocabulaire pour mieux exprimer ce que vous voudrez expliquer. Alors, in English, we speak about instruments. Instruments. So that is a piano, a guitar, a violin, en français on dit violon, a flute, a trumpet, a saxophone, a drum set, a cello, a clarinet, a harp, a trombone, and an accordion. So, ça, c'est la prononciation en anglais. That is the English pronunciation. 
we also find different kinds of genres of music. So in English, we talk about pop, we talk about rock, we talk about jazz, we talk about classical music, we talk about blues, electronic, country, reggae, and metal. We also have punk music, funk, electronic music, and rap music. So now we will talk about the verbs related to music. So we've got play music. I play, you play, he or she plays. N'oubliez pas, avec le présent simple, il y a le S à la fin. So the third person singular, we add S to the verb. We play, you play, they play. We can listen, we can sing, we can dance, we can compose music, we can practice, we can perform, we can record, we can jam. So ça, c'est vraiment courant. It is a way to say on peut improviser. So we can have a jam session. Je vais mettre au chat pour vous, comme ça vous pouvez voir. When we talk about a jam session, c'est vraiment une séance très spontanée. So it's a very spontaneous time we come together to play music. We rehearse. So, ça, c'est comme une répétition. It is where we practice. We can also rehearse. We can improvise. And we can transcribe music. So, here are some examples. If we use the verb record, we can say they are recording their new album in the studio. If you look, they are recording. C'est quel temps? Which tense? Vous pouvez le mettre votre réponse dans le chat. Which tense? When I say they are recording, is it present simple? Present continuous? Which tense? Qu'est-ce que vous pensez? Yes, Florence. It is the present continuous. Thank you, Sigrid. If you look at number two, he composes original melodies. Melodies. Which tense? Present continuous or present simple? What do you think? Thank you, Sigrid and Florence. It is, yes, absolutely, it's present simple. Let's look at the rest. He sings with passion. They improvised an amazing guitar solo. He plays the piano every morning. I listen to this song every day. So that is the examples of how we use the verbs for music. How do we describe music? Let's have a look. When describing music, it's helpful to use descriptive adjectives and sensory language to evoke the auditory experience for your listener or reader. Ça veut dire que c'est très utile d'utiliser des adjectifs des, qui, qui donnent un peu plus de description. Comment est-ce qu'on peut décrire des choses? Remember, everyone's perception of music is subjective. So your description should convey both the technical aspects and your personal interpretation of the piece. Let's check out some useful adjectives. Joyful. The music is joyful. C'est joyeux. It's melancholic. Melancholic, energetic, energetic or energique. 
seren, so serene, powerful, puissant, gentle, doux, dramatic, dramatic, lively, animé, uplifting, exaltant, tranquil, tranquille, intense, intense, Vibrant, vibrant. Captivating, captivant. Rhythmic, rhythmic. So these are adjectives you can use to describe music. So let's look at some examples. N'oubliez pas qu'il y a une traduction qui est juste en dessous la, la, la phrase anglaise. The band played an energetic song that had everyone dancing enthusiastically. Le groupe a joué une chanson énergique qui a fait danser tout le monde avec enthousiasme. The acoustic guitar played a gentle melody that was perfect for a quiet evening. La guitare acoustique jouait une mélodie douce parfaite pour une soirée tranquille. The salsa band played vibrant rhythms that filled the dance floor with energy. Le groupe de salsa jouait des rythmes vibrants qui remplissent la piste danse de danse d'énergie. So, on peut utiliser le vocabulaire. What are some adjectives to describe tempo and volume? N'oubliez pas, the tempo, c'est le rythme. C'est la vitesse de chanson. The volume and the volume. So let's look at fast. C'est rapide, fast. The tempo can be slow. Ça peut être long. Lively, animé. Accelerated, c'est accéléré. Loud, c'est fort. Soft, c'est doux. Haut, faible. Quiet, c'est calme. Resounding, c'est résonant. Soft, aussi, on a une répétition. Et calme, which is calm. So let's look at some example. The ballad was slow and soulful, evoking deep emotions. The ballad, ça veut dire que c'est une chanson qui est très lente. Normalement, et en anglais, on s'appelle ballad. The music played at a leisurely pace, creating a relaxed atmosphere. The acoustic guitar played a calm melody that set a peaceful mood. The music was quiet and serene, perfect for relaxation. The guitar solo in the rock song was incredibly rapid, showcasing the guitarist's skills. Donc, le plus important, c'est que vous savez, en anglais, on met toujours l'adjectif avant le nom ou après le verbe être. Mais pour l'instant, c'est pour ça qu'on peut voir a calm melody si vous regardez la deuxième phrase. Mais dans la première phrase, l'adjectif, c'est après le verbe être au passé. The ballad was slow and soulful. Parce que maintenant, ce qu'on décrit devient en premier. C'est le, le début de la phrase. So that's why the ballad was slow and soulful, but the acoustic guitar played a calm melody. So ici, c'est ensemble. Talking about preferences. Talking about your music preference will always be a great tool to describe who you are and at the same time generate interesting conversations. 
So let's take a look at some expressions and ways to talk about preferences. Donc, c'est la façon dans laquelle vous parlez de vos préférences en musique. I like music. Or, I love rock. I'm a fan of pop. Or, I'm a fan of ballads. So, n'oubliez pas, ballads, c'est des chansons plus longues. I prefer, I am into, my favorite genre or artist or song is, I am passionate about, I am crazy about. So here are some examples. I love pop music. I'm a fan of classic, classical music. I prefer jazz over rock. Ici, vous pouvez voir le mot over. Ça veut dire que je préfère jazz au lieu de quelque chose d'autre. So, quand vous faites une comparaison, vous utilisez over. I prefer jazz over rock. I'm into electronic music. My favorite genre is rock music. I am passionate about playing the guitar. I am crazy about K-pop. Now we look at the opposite. Le contraire. If I like something, il y a aussi Le contraire, I dislike something. Je n'aime pas ou je ne supporte pas. I have, we have, I hate. Je déteste. I'm not a fan of. Je ne suis pas fan de. Or, I can't bear. Je ne peux pas supporter. Parfois, I can't bear is better. C'est un peu mieux que I hate. Parce que I hate, c'est vraiment une émotion très forte. So let's look at some examples. I dislike heavy metal. Je n'aime pas ou je ne supporte pas le heavy metal. I hate rap music. Je déteste le rap. I'm not a fan of country music. Je ne suis pas fan de musique country. I can't bear loud concerts. Je ne peux pas supporter les concerts bruyants. You also have questions that you can ask to understand someone else, other people. So if you want to ask, si vous voudrez demander. For example, what kind of music do you like? And why? Who is your favorite artist or band? And why do you like them? Do you prefer listening to music alone or with friends? And why? How does music make you feel? What's your favorite song? Et pourquoi? And why? Do you like going to concerts? Oui or no? So let's answer the following questions in the chat. So vous pouvez répondre librement sur le chat. Who is your favorite artist? So ça c'est numéro A. What is your favorite song? And why do you consider him or her a great artist? So, pourquoi est-ce que vous pensez que c'est un artiste que vous aimez? So, vous pouvez mettre vos réponses dans le chat et on peut discuter un petit peu. So, try to use the vocabulary that we saw during the conference. So, je vais vous donner quelques minutes. Si vous voudrez répondre au chat, who is your favorite artist? What is your favorite song? And why do you consider him or her a great artist? So Raymond says, simple minds 
Ok, c'est très intéressant. Florence says Nickelback, beautiful. I also love Nickelback. I think they're quite lovely. And uh, Raymond, why Simple Minds? Pourquoi? Sigrid, Prince. Yes, Prince is a great, great, great artist. I will put uh, an artist in the chat as well. I will say Freddie Mercury. I don't know. I have Freddie Mercury, and he is from the band Queen. So I really love them. I like the sound of their music. I think it is very, not calming, but it really is joyful. Their music is very joyful. Sigrid, I love it as well. Yes, Freddie Mercury is amazing. Valerie says, uh, Jacob Devereaux. Okay, beautiful. Thank you for sharing. So this is how we talk about music. Nostalgic. Yes, it's nostalgic. So music can be joyful, nostalgic. It can help us think about moments in the past. And that is why we really find music that connects with us. Let's have a look. Let's look at some fun facts about music. Music and plants. So studies suggest that plants can grow faster and healthier when exposed to music. Classical music in particular. It is said to have a positive effect on plant growth. Ça, c'est bien à savoir. Alors, let's have a look. The Mozart effect. The term Mozart effect refers to claims that listening to Mozart's music can temporarily enhance cognitive abilities and improve IQ scores. Ça veut dire que quand on écoute de Mozart, uh, on, on devient le plus en plus intelligent. So, ça, c'est intéressant aussi. Synesthesia. Some musicians like Duke Ellington and Billy Joel have a condition called synesthesia, where they can see music as colors or shapes. The sensory crossover can influence their musical creativity. Ça, c'est très intéressant aussi. Musical training and the brain. Learning to play a musical instrument can improve various brain functions, including memory, spatial reasoning, and language skills. It also been shown to increase the size of the corpus callosum, the bridge between the brain's hemispheres. Ça, c'est aussi intéressant. Conclusion. It is a fact that music is another universal language. Therefore, try to discover and get interested in conversations that involve genres, rhythms, and perspectives. Put into practice what you have learned during the conference and enjoy the world of music from anywhere in the world. So thank you everyone for joining me for this conference this evening. As I said, the conference will be sent to your email via PDF. So tout ce qu'on a fini sera envoyé par email. Okay? Do you have any questions or comments? You can put them in the chat or you can share with me now si vous voudrez. Or oh, est-ce que tu dis bien? No, c'est tout bon. Donc, so thank you everyone for joining me for this conference this evening. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And I will see you next week. Je vais vous voir la semaine prochaine. Merci tout le monde. Passez une bonne soirée. Au bye, bye. Bye. Thank you.